What about hydrohalogenation? This is the addition of a hydrogen halide across a double bond. So if we continue our sequence, this time, instead of adding hydrogen or a, hal a halogen, we're going to add one of each. Let's call it hydrogen bromide. In this case, the hydrogen bromide is going to add, as usual, across the double bond. And so we're going to have a single bond with our original hydrogens. But this time, one hydrogen and one bromine. So the product this time will become bromoethane. Because there's only one bromine, it has to be on the first carbon, and therefore we don't need the number. We just call it bromoethane. You can see this time, because it's a hydrogen halide, so we could also have added hydrogen chloride, hydrogen um, iodide, or hydrogen fluoride. And the same thing would have happened. We would have had an addition across the double bond with the hydrogen going onto one atom and the halogen going onto the other. Now this has been quite easy in a sense when we've had uh, equal numbers of hydrogens on either side. But there's a further complication that we can find when we have an unequal number of hydrogens on uh, the two carbons where the double bond is sitting between them. So here's an example uh, underneath. This would be propene. Propene. Okay, you don't need a number because it's got to be on the number one carbon. Now what would happen if, for example, I added hydrogen iodine, uh, hydrogen iodide to this? You know, if I added hydrogen iodide to my propene, then I can have the hydrogen adding, if I just uh, switch the color over, so you can see, I can either have the double bond disappearing and a hydrogen coming here and an iodine coming here, or it could be the other way around, an iodine here and a hydrogen here. Now, in our previous examples, the molecules were the same. Whichever way I had drawn the, the two hydrogens, the two halogens, or even the hydrogen halide, wouldn't have mattered because there were the same number of hydrogens on each of the two original carbons. But in this case, there isn't. There are two hydrogens already here on the um, terminal carbon, but only one on that middle carbon. So then we need to add an extra little rule here, and that extra little rule is called Markovnikov's rule. And Markovnikov's rule is basically um, when you're adding atoms in, they will favor the side where there's already um, a higher number of them. So if I have hydrogen iodide being added in here, my most likely product is going to be carbon, carbon, carbon. Now, of course, I have my single bonds. Um, my hydrogens are already uh, are not going to change from where they were. So these are my original ones. But on the end carbon, I have two hydrogens. And on the central carbon, I have only one. So therefore, I'm going to put my iodine off the central carbon and my hydrogen off the end carbon. So when I name the product here, it would be 2-iodo-propane. Of course, now the double bond's gone, so it's now gone from being an alkene to an alkane, and the iodine has gone on to the uh, central carbon. Now, if it went on to an end carbon, we would simply call that 1-iodo-propane, but we just need to remember that Markovnikov's rule is going to tell us a little something about the preferred atom to which an addition reaction might occur. This is also an important rule to look at for some uh, later substitution reactions. And in fact, it's more common when we look at substitutions. But it's worth just flagging now, just so you know that where you've got a couple of isomers possible, often one of them is more likely than another.